evening, Thanks. everybody. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to our first episode of Natural Vibe. Um, I have two of my very special girls doing this with me because I never wanted to do it by myself. So they have graciously agreed to do it with me. I feel like a fish in a fishbowl when I'm just on camera by myself talking out into cyberspace. So I pulled them in so that we could do this together and we can work our way through this together. So how y'all doing tonight? <sighs> Wish it was Friday again. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a wonderful thing. I wish it was Friday again, but it's only Monday. Mm. Yeah, it's only Monday. So we are going to be playing with uh, some of these layouts to see what we want these to look like <laughs> as we uh, go through this. So y'all going to have to bear with us while we do this. I wanted to start with just some introductions of who we are and maybe kind of what we do and what our experience has been a little bit in music so people can get to know a little bit about us. So um, they know a little bit about me, but I'll start anyway for the people who don't really know. Um, my name is Tammy Harris. I'm a singer songwriter from Chicago. I've done a few independent projects um, that you can find on iTunes, Spotify, all, all those places. Um, I love music. I love music history. Um, if you are in my group, you know that I post a lot about music history. So um, you guys can read about that. And occasionally we're going to share some of the highlights of a particular week um, on this live broadcast once a week. So um, born and raised in a child, but now live in Atlanta. So Nicole. Well, I was born and raised in Chicago, was in Houston for the past 10 years. And now I am in another state. Um, not sure if I wanna disclose that all over, you know, Facebook just yet. <laughs> I, have, I have stalkers, so. <laughs> you have fans. So yeah, so I'm, um, in another state right now. Been here for a little bit. Um, you know, I've, I've been singing my entire life um, since, well, since I was about seven. Um, that's all I wanted to do at one point. I knew that's what I was supposed to do. And then, you know, life happens and, you know, I, I'm really not singing as much now. My daughter's singing, so I put more of my focus into her. Um, but I still love all things music. Um, bass. I love the bass. You know, yeah, still, she's been teaching I, herself bass for how many years? Since 2013. I want to say I got my first, well, I started with guitar first, like 2009, 2008. Then I switched to the bass. And um, yeah, I should be like playing behind superstars by now. So, you know, I got to get back serious, you know, because I will start, learn so much, put it down, pick it back up, start over again, you know? So I need to be more consistent, you know? Cause I'm supposed to be a beast, but. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Tawana. Good evening. I am currently multitasking, but I am Tawana Bafe Dubois. I am, I'm fairly new, fairly old to the music scene. I am a background artist. Um, I sing for back, sing background for a lot of artists um, throughout the Chicago and Chicagoland area. Uh, I've been doing this kind of like since 2008. I am one third of a group, Women in Motion. Uh, we do background as well as lead. I was born and bred in Chicago and I'm still here. <laughs> um, I am there wife of a great guitar player and the mother of three and i guess that's just about it right now okay so um we are going to come and do this for you guys once a week my sisters have been bugging me to do something one at least once a week go live do something for the last year 
And I was actually a bit inspired by another podcast that I do. Um, that is another love of mine. And that's Bears Banner. Although it's very difficult sometimes to love the bear. It's, def it's definitely like being in an abusive relationship. But nonetheless, I still love my bears. And so um, Bernard, who started that, you know, gave me a little tutorial on how to go about um, doing this on for Root Soul Productions, you know, through StreamYard. So I greatly appreciate him for that. So a couple things we're going to bring to you every week. We're going to do a poll. We're, go we're, we're going to put it out earlier than we did today. And then we'll give the results on that poll every week. Now, what I want you guys to do is if you have any suggestions for songs, feel free. But this is what it is. We are going to do some of the best and some of the worst remakes that have ever been done. So we're going to post two polls. On that poll, we're going to pick three songs that each of us likes and that we think is a great remake. And then we're going to pick one that we think is a crappy remake. And then we want you guys to vote on which one is the best out of the three that we selected and which one is the worst out of the three that we selected. Now, don't add more options. I know everybody loves to add options. Don't add more <laughs> options. If you have a suggestion for a song you want us to throw into the mix, then just shoot it to me in, in a message and we'll include it. So for this week, I just put the poll up today, but and we're not gonna tell you who picked what. We're just gonna give the results for the poll next week. And we'll give the results for the next poll next week, too, because I'm going to put that up by Friday and then give you guys all weekend to vote so that we know what your choice is. Um, again, you're picking the best song out of the three and then the worst remake out of the three. So don't vote on the one that's the worst. Don't vote for the one that you like the best. Um, now let's talk about a little bit about uh, music history um, because I am a history nerd. So we're actually going to kind of talk about from October 23rd to November 1st since we didn't start. And October 23rd is the start of Scorpio season and I'm a Scorpio. So that's why we started. Um, 65 years ago, November 5th coming up, Nat King Cole did the first groundbreaking show for a black American at the time. And it, the Nat King Cole show debuted. So what do you guys know, or how do you feel about, feel, feel about that? Have, have you guys ever heard the story of, of like how he, how he got the show and like, or either what that show meant for black America? I personally have not. I don't even yeah. know. If I, I think I've seen some clips, of course, of the shows, but not really knowing what they were. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I never really knew that he had his own show because I, I remember my mama telling me stories about. And what year did you say that was in? It was in 1956. Right. 65 so, years ago. Right. So. And my mother was born in 54. So I remember her saying something about the first time she saw like the Supremes, then when the Supremes were going to be on like American Bandstand or something, they all were, everybody's rushing home because we didn't see that on TV. So for this show, for Nat King Cole to have a show, his own show in 1956 says a lot. Yeah. Tawana, you ever seen the Nat King Cole show? Reruns of it? Because none of us were around when he came to song. <laughs> oh, is she frozen? Is she? Think you're frozen, <laughs> Tawana. Yeah, I think she's frozen. Okay. 1966, 55 years ago. And this would have been a great show to have my friend Stan Skibby on because he does an amazing tribute to... Uh, Jimi Hendrix, and he's been doing it for um, well over 20 years. He lives in Paris now. Um, he used to play with the group Magnum Force, but um, he is a left-handed guitar player. He does an amazing tribute to Jimi Hendrix. And 55 years ago, 
October 23rd, Jimi Hendrix released, the Jimi Hendrix Experience released their first single, Hey Joe. Now, my auntie used to love this song. I'm not, it's just probably, I know people who are big Jimi Hendrix fans are not going to like this. I'm not a huge Jimi Hendrix fan. I like a couple of songs by Jimi Hendrix. But uh, what do y'all know about Jimi Hendrix or are y'all fans at all of Jimi Hendrix? No. But what was the two songs that you li that you listed? Huh? What was the two songs that was listed? Hey Joe and um, that were listed? Yeah. I Jimmy. only listed one. It was Hey Joe that came out. I thought it was another one because I was like, yeah, I know that one. Mm -hmm. You didn't list another song. What's not about not not for him. What's another? Maybe I'm thinking of another artist then. But yeah, I'm not. I'm I'm gonna tell you right <laughs> now. <laughs> I am going to be learning a lot doing this show with you because there's a lot of music that I might feel like I don't like. So like when I was in Houston and the band that I was in, mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot because it was a lot of music that I would not even listen to and had never heard and a lot of different genres. So it's a good thing. But you didn't I'm like sure. house music until you started hanging with me. Hmm. <laughs> Right, I sure didn't. So I'm sure if you mention a song, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I know, I know, I know some Jimi Hendrix music. Yeah, and for some reason I'm drawing a blank too right now. Uh, it's I think it's someone called one called Psychedelic something, but it's it's escaping me right now. Um, I think well, I know you know this song. Volume is you, off. Huh? I think her volume is off. I don't know. Um, Forty years ago. November 7th, coming up this week, Private Eyes by Daryl Hall and John Oates was released. Now, I don't know, how much do you like 80s rock? Because I, I like 80s rock. 80s, there was a lot of cool music being made by Hall and Oates, Duran Duran, The Police, Red Hot Chili Peppers, like everybody. Um, it was a lot of good rock. Tears for Fears, like there was a lot. Um, but are you a Hall and Oates fan? Um. No, I'm not. But girl, I got it. I got to I got to I got to introduce you to some Hall <laughs> I mean, I, so I why like do you know some Hall and Oates, right? I like Hall and Oates. I love them. <laughs> so, so name a song. Private um, Eyes, Sarah Smile. Okay, I know Sarah yeah. Smile. Rich um, Girl. What what was it? Rich Girl. Yeah, no. I can't go for that. I, 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 can't, I was trying to think of it. I was That's thinking, the song. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. I was like, Jimi Hendrix. I'm so stupid. That's the song. <laughs> what? I can't go for that. No. I yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, I, 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 just, that song, I was though. just listening to that song. I mean, that's that's a classic. Yes. It yes. is a classic. That's a song. Okay, so 35 years ago today, 1986, oh. October 25th. Well, I should say today. 35 years ago, October 25th. For the first time in history, we had three female singers top the Billboard charts. And at number one was Cindy Lauper with True Colors. Number two was Typical Male by Tina Turner. And number three was When I Think of You by Janet Jackson. Now, I know you know all of the songs. <laughs> uh, what was the Cindy Lauper song? True Colors. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know you said you don't want us to mention other stuff in, like regards, what? What do you in, mean? in regards to remakes and stuff. But when you just say Cindy Lauper, it's not in our poll. And I didn't choose it only because it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Cool. She cool. remade What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Oh, did oh. she? Yes. I got to go listen to that. I never heard I'm that. I'm going to have to listen to that. I and I wow. was thinking, oh my God, what? But it wasn't as bad. And maybe it wasn't bad to me because I don't like Marvin Gaye's version. <laughs> I not like Marvin Gaye. I don't, I hate that song. That's like, oh, oh you hate just that song? Yes, I don't like the song. So Is it because you're sick of it? I just never liked it. That was just not one of my favorite songs by him. Mm. I could do without it. 
And yeah, I, I think, think a lot of people singing. probably beat you up for that because that's an iconic song. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's, that's like a Chicago staple. <laughs> then when I heard her do it, I was I was prepared to be more <laughs> disgusted. <laughs> but I wasn't. I was like, it's equal. <laughs> And oh, wait a minute. Okay. Wait, we have some comments. So I'm new to this. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. Bernard said, Black people were so proud of that show from what my mom said. It uh, it went because no one could pay. Oh, they couldn't pay. They couldn't cover the advertising. Oh, so well, that's from Bernard. Hey, guys. What, what show was he talking about? He's talking about the Nat King Cole show. I didn't oh. realize, so I told you we're going to be working through some. Bernard told me some things, but some stuff but that you do live, it's <laughs> going to see how it really flows. So um, comments come up, and I can add the comments to the screen. And so I'm just going to have to be paying attention to see who comments. Guy, my name is Nicole, so you can speak to me soon. Well, oh, yeah, okay, guys. <laughs> Say hi to Nicole. Say hi to Tawana. Don't leave them out. Both Bernard and Guy do the Bears Banner um, podcast with me, so they're, they're checking us out and, and, and see if I can run this as smoothly as Bernard does. It's, it's going to take a little bit, you know. Uh-oh, so Bernard said they were both in the black car for not, for, Uh oh, what's going on? He said what? They are revoking your black car <laughs> but not liking what's going on. I'll make it I, I can't believe that you don't like that song, but there's another song that we talked about that you didn't like, and I was like, are you kidding me? Do you remember what that was? Anything? Was something It'll about come to me, but I was like, how can you not like that song? Was it something by Prince? That's possible. Well, you don't oh, like Lord. Prince at all. <laughs> what? No. So why do you even know that? No. Yeah, Nicole says some things that surprise me sometimes. I'm like, what? <laughs> Okay, and then 35, you said you don't know anything about like 80s rock. Seriously, Nicole? Oh, no, 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 I do. I, oh, you I, do? I, I, okay, okay, okay. So, 35 years ago, 1986, well, not today, sorry, October 25th, 20, 35 years ago, Bon Jovi went to number one with their album Slippery with When Wet, and it had Living on a Prayer, and You Give Love a Bad Name on it. And I know you know those songs from playing with the rock group in the end. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about as far as music history goes. Then a little bit later, we're going to talk about current events. But for now, I want to talk about a topic that Nicole and I discussed a little bit. And I kind of want to see if you guys have a feel. Hey, Jay, how you doing? But guy, Jay you had it right the first time. Too. Guy, you had it right the first time. Her name is Tawana, not Tawanda. Right, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is Where this? Is I, don't what I, I don't see it in the podcast. What did he? Where did he? Where did he? Where did he he, he put Hey Nicole and Tawanda. Oh. And he said Tawanda. Sorry. Oh. Hey Lee. Lee's a phenomenal bass player from Chicago, retired firefighter, living in, I don't know who I'm going to say, but retired. <laughs> He's still in <laughs> Chicago, too. Originally from Chicago, too. So Nicole and I were having a discussion, and I actually had this discussion with another Lee, who's also a bass player, Lee Hurst, um, where we were wondering, how do you feel Lee, I know where you live. I just didn't know if you wanted me to say. <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to be incognito like Nicole. But um, I, I'm an artist that writes what I feel, right? And 99% of the time, I probably will not put profanity in, in, in a song. Um, however, um, I've been feeling a certain kind of way. So I wrote a couple songs that cut, you know, a little profanity, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to balance it out. So the question was, do you feel that profanity has a place in music? Does it have a purpose ever? So, Nicole, you want to share your view on that? 
Well, I don't want to come off like a prude or, you know, <laughs> church girl, the church woman, the mother of the church, but I just feel like in certain genres, um, um, oh, Jay, Ali is your cousin. Okay. Hey. Um, I just don't think in like music, like R and B, I, I it makes me feel uncomfortable. And it might be because okay, I listen to music with my daughter. It's uncomfortable for her if songs have curse words in it to be listening to it with me. I feel like I can't listen to it. My parents, and even when I'm just listening by myself to certain songs, if it's like a slow love songs, I don't I don't want to hear that. Um, but I don't, I don't really want to hear real, real vulg vulgarity in music either. Um, sometimes if I'm feeling, you know, like, a, like, you know, in my ghetto times when I want to be ghetto, I might be like, yeah, you know, thugging it or whatever. But for the most part, I don't, you know, like I love tank. Some songs I was listening to it today, like K. Michelle has a song that I really like in my playlist. She curses in it. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you want to express in song how you feel. This is how I talk. So this is what I would say. So you want to express it in music, but I don't know. I kind of feel like in song, you should be, you should have a more eloquent way of saying what you need to say. It's the same, It's to me, it's the same as writing how you talk. That irritates me if I read something and I'm like, they probably talk just like that. It's the same with music. I feel like find a more eloquent way in music, if it's, especially if it's a ballad. It's kind of like, why? I don't know, okay. that's me. So Anna, what you think? Okay, let me sit down, sit back down real quick, and then I say this real quick, and then, but go back to mute. Um, I kind of agree. Um, I, with the you know the ballads, um, finding different phrasing to get out what you're feeling, but I I I do feel that sometimes you just can't find a word for to express what it is that you're saying. And that's the easiest way. Sometimes more people will understand it better. It coming out that way. Um, mm -hmm. And that would be the reason for the clean version versus the, you know, unclean version, versions of a, of a song. So I do agree. I mean, I do agree in somewhat, but I also disagree. Um, I do feel that sometimes you just can't get around that, uh, that particular word that you're using as far as vulgarity is concerned. So this is what I'm gonna say. Um, when I was growing up, my prerogative and control came out and they said, damn. And that my mother does not curse. She did not curse. She still don't curse. I don't know if I've heard my mother say a curse words to this day in my life to tell you the truth. Um, she literally told my sister and I that um, if we wanted to listen to that song, we had to censor it. So we had to literally be sitting by the radio. <laughs> and when it got to ready to say, damn, we had to turn it down. Because she said, if I hear that word, y'all can't listen to that song. Now, when I went to college and I came home, she didn't want her daughters out there cursing like a sailor, right? So she was like, you don't be out there cursing, do you? <laughs> and I was like, I said, well, mom, sometimes you just got to curse somebody out. I was like, and she just looked, she was like, oh, my God. So I, I'm going to say this. I don't think that profanity belongs in a love song. I don't want to listen to a song saying I want to. F you, blah, 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 because that's not going to put me in the mood. A song like that is not going to put me in the mood. Um, and there are a lot of raunchy songs where they talk about screwing, but saying the F word. And, and I think it's unnecessary and I think it's tacky. Um, but what I'm talking about, 
where I feel like it is, it's, it's more to express like an emotion. Um, and sometimes I think the way to express that emotion is just emphasize with a curse word. And like CeeLo Green has forget you, that's the clean version, and he has the other version. And the other version just hits a little harder and makes you be like, yeah, I get it. You know, D'Angelo has a song called Shit Damn Motherfucker, right? And surprisingly, I like that song. But he's talking about a really jacked up situation where you kind of walk in and you're like, like, that's how you would feel. Like, you get it. You get why he would say that. Um, I don't think it should run rampant in songs, um, but I do think that it can have a place. But I do agree that it shouldn't just run rampant. And I don't believe it belongs in it belongs in love songs, which I'll touch on when we talk about the last thing we're gonna talk about because there is a song on that album that I don't like that I would have liked if it didn't go there. But let's see well, what God said. said. Real quick before you um say that, I wanna say too, I'll I'll say it depends on what the curse word is. Cause like when you just was saying damn, to me like damn. Or as, depending on the context, are not like to me curse words. But like, like the show, like the song K Michelle got. You know, she talking about you know seeing a guy, nothing in the world really matter to me. You know, it's a real slow song, real cute. And then she talking about all I think about is effing you. You know, it's kind of like, eh. or like Tank got the song where he talks about um, he he actually. Kind of incorporated um, Patty LaBelle, If Only You Know, If Only You Knew, right? So in the beginning of it, he's singing that, if only you knew. that part, right? And then it goes um, about if you knew how much I like you, you wouldn't be tripping about my niggas. You wouldn't be tripping about them bitches. You know, it's just kind of like, I know what you're saying because that's how y'all talk, but it's still just kind of like. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. Yeah, that, that, I wouldn't like that, 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 that but though, and it just really I wouldn't makes like it that, but I understand it. why you gotta say F a person once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but um, God said it's like nudity in art. Sometimes there's context behind it. Some use of some, some of us use profanity to emote an emotional circumstance. That's true. If it's done just to be cussing, then the message is drowned by the method. I, I agree with that. I kind of, you know what? You can kind of compare that to Eddie Murphy when he talked about. They said when he when he they said he got the call that Bill Cosby said that you know he was cursing in your show. He was like, I just didn't come in here and do a, a show full of cuss words. He was like, you know, there was some jokes in between it. It was layered in. You know, there was, and a lot of he told stories, and a lot of comedians nowadays they just curse. Like curse, yes, for no yes, reason Richard at Martin all. Curse, Eddie Murphy curse, but they were artists in it. They weren't just up there cursing. Swanna, were you about to say something? No, I was just agreeing. Okay. It, it, sometimes it can just it does begin to be too much. Like I, I'm not a fan of rap. I'm, I'm, <laughs> and I think that, you know, the the cursing and 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 you know the I don't like the B word. You can call somebody else. You can use another word to express that actual word. But um, I was just agreeing with, you know, how you were saying about the comedians, you know, or certain songs. It's just you use the word and it's like overuse of it. And it's it's not even if you use it so much, you can't even you understand what they're saying. But you, it's, it's just too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So taste, no, I shouldn't say taste, when when necessary and when appropriate, not just for the sake of cussing, like God said, I totally agree. But that was one topic that we had, and I'm still trying to figure out how much of it I'm going to leave in these two songs, because I just wasn't happy when I wrote these songs. So, you know, I, I'm somebody that's true to my feelings. So, you know. Okay, so let's talk about um, current events. A little bit, and I'm just going to talk a, a little bit about a few people that were inducted into the Hall of Fame yesterday. They had the award yesterday, um, and so inductees included Jay Z, Carol King, Tina Turner, the Go Go's, Foo Fighters, and Todd Rundgren. 
Those were the actual inductees. And Todd who? Todd Rundgren. Oh, okay. Yeah, not somebody I listen to either. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> else I know. <laughs> uh, early so let me ask you a What is it? So let me ask you a question. So you have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, right? You have the Blues Hall of Fame. Is that it? Is there like a country hall of fame? Is there like a, a songwriter's rock? hall of fame? And I mean, music wise, or is it just the rock and roll hall of fame for any type of artist? The country, and I, you see, you're going to put me on the spot. Country, I think they get inducted into the Grand Ole Opry, but I don't know if they call it a hall of fame. Okay. I don't know if they have something called a hall of fame. I'm going to have to check that out. I, I, I'm not sure. But the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame covers rappers, singers, whatever. It can cover rappers. Not all rappers get inducted into it. But yeah. I mean, but I'm saying, because I, I just, like, when I saw that, you know, Jay-Z was being inducted into it, it was kind of like, is that his like, job? You because don't think he fits? He's not the I, first rapper to be inducted, though. But I may just not know what it is. That's what I was wondering. No, they they, 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 they they I'm trying to remember who was the first rapper to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I can't remember. I mean, you gonna you gonna make me go have to go check? Um, but he definitely was not the first one. So some early influence awards went to Kraftwerk, Charlie Patton, who was considered the father of Delta Blues, and Gil Scott Heron. Gil Scott Heron. Uh -huh. I guess I know that. <laughs> Born and raised in Chicago, grew up in New York, had songs. Some of my favorite songs by him include The Bottle, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised, Winter in America. Um, those are just a few of my favorite ones. And then Music Excellence Awards went to LL Cool J, Billy Preston, Randy Rhodes, and the Ama Gurton Award. Ama Gurton was the founder of Atlanta Records went to Charles Avon, I'm sorry, Clarence Avon. And Clarence Avon is considered the black godfather. There is a there is a Netflix documentary about him. You, you should watch it if you haven't, everybody out there. It tells his whole story. He touched the careers of so many people, including Charlie Pack, Park, I mean, uh, Charlie Parker, Diana Washington, and a whole lot of other people. Um, and it's a really great documentary. But do, what do you think or what do you know about any of the people that got inducted or acknowledged um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Nothing. The jet people think Jay-Z is the whatever, and I think he just whatever. No. <laughs> so crazy. I'm not a huge Jay-Z fan. My brother would, you know, would, would knock me upside my head for that, but I'm just, I'm just not. I respect everything that he does, but I'm just not, I'm not a huge fan. Not not my kind of kind of music. That's shocking to hear that Tina Turner is just now being inducted. Right? I know that is shocking. shocking. That is shocking. Yeah, that, that is shocking already. Yeah, I would have thought that she was already already inducted. Oh, uh, let's see. Todd made, let's see, Bernard shared some information. Todd made the original version, Hello, It's Me, that the Isley Brothers remade two years later. I did not know that. Did not know that. I'm going to have to go look that up and take a listen. Okay. Um, birthdays. Um, I was going to share all the birthdays that are out that are have started since... Um, <laughs> Scorpio season started October 23rd, but I'm not because it's like 50 people. Um, so I'm just going to touch on a few. Now, I'm going to start with Melba Moore because we have the same birthday. It was October 29th. Um, we got Lolita Holloway from Chicago. If you're a house head, check out her stuff. You have the amazing Mahalia Jackson. Um, her birthday was, uh, was during this time period that we're talking about. Ike Turner. Eddie Holland. Eddie Holland was a songwriter for Motown, songwriting group. Ed Holland, Dozier and Holland wrote tons of hits for, for Motown for many, many years. We got Bootsy Collins. We got Ronald Poole Bell, who recently passed away. We have Diane Reeves, who is a 
jazz, vocalist, uh, phenomenon. We had Najee. We had Weird Al Yankovic, if y'all remember him. Yeah, and nice his up. quirky song that he remade. You have Gregory Porter, Tracy Ellis Ross, who is also my same birthday as, as, as me. Uh, you got Busy B. Marquis, who was a founding person in hip hop. Um, you have Randy Jackson. You have Frank Ocean. Shoppers in Chicago know who that is. You have Sierra. And uh, you have Bernard Edwards. And then the person that I'm going to end with, her birthday is coming up. It is on November 8th. 7th or 8th. Ooh. Forgive me. 7th or 8th. And that is the one and only and amazing Benny Riffleton. She's born in Chicago. Has so many songs that I love. What is like y'all favorite song? Okay, favorite three songs. Well, favorite song by Benny Riffleton. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to put Nicole on the spot. Oh. I've, been introducing, I've been introducing her to more Benny Riffleton. Kind of the same way that Vanessa introduced me to more Mini Ripperton because I liked so many Ripperton, but now I like even more Mini Ripperton because about 10 years ago or more, um, Vanessa introduced me to some underground Mini Ripperton songs that I didn't know. I mean, I like the 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 normal ones, you know. I like, I think my most favorite is Back Down Memory Lane. Um, I like um, Inside My Love. I think I'm kind of tired of loving you, but I used to like love that so much. And Shanice had remade it and I liked her version. Back then, I could hit the note, but not now. Not anymore. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> I can fake it. <laughs> and so, Wanda, what about you? Um, just about the same. I would have to really think about that. Um, I'm trying to think. I cannot remember one of the songs that she had. Um, she did a duet. I cannot think of it. And I think that that was a really nice song. Um, Adventures in Paradise. That's a really nice song. Um, Inside My Love is just that. That that just will always be a, a beautiful, sexy song to me. Um, so that would be my my favorite. So Inside My Love was actually going to be my um, garter song whenever I got married. <laughs> and, but I ended up giving it to my sister. So now I got to find me another one. Because I, I was like, I said, okay, when I get married, um, I don't want to use the typical songs that everybody uses. I don't want to use Let's Get It On and Sexual Healing and blah, 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 blah. I said, I want to use a song that I've never heard anybody use. So I was like, I'm going to use Inside My Love. And my sister was looking for a song when she got married. So I, get, I gave it to her. So I don't know. I, I got I to decide if I'm going to still it use it if that day ever comes. Um, or if I'm going to find me something else. But I like all the songs that you guys said. But some more underground songs that she has um, that I think are, are great songs are one that I remade. Baby, I this one I have. I the one you did. Um, Tripod Quest sample that. So a lot of people know the sample, but they didn't know, necessarily know the song. Um, there's another song that she has that I think is really sexy. It's called Every Time He Comes Around. I love that song. Like, I just, I love that song. And um, a song, Reasons. That's another song. So those are three songs that she has that are a little more... Um, not so mainstream, but I think they are great songs. And of course, Adventures in Paradise. I love that song too. So um, that's that's for the birthdays. Oh, I have two more birthdays. Oh. And, and they like love music too. So November 12th, my son's birthday, he's a Scorpio. And Ladybug's birthday is on the 16th. My dog, she'll be nine. So we'll include them next week because <laughs> we're only going up to the 8th right now. But oh, okay. We we only do it up to the eighth. We'll be back next Monday. They'll, they'll, they'll be covered um, in that time period. <laughs> so um, I know earlier this week I asked you guys if you had listened to um, Elton John's new album uh, because one of my face 
Facebook group members, I think it was Steven Johnson, he shared that Elton John had um, released a new album. So I wanted to go check it out. Um, I listened to it and I feel like I need to listen to it again <laughs> because there were some songs that were okay, but I didn't listen to it and was like, oh, I love that. You know, like nothing grabbed me. He um, was kind of all over the place with genres. He was trying to touch on a little bit of everything, I guess, to, you know, stay relevant and, and current. But, you know, he got a little hip hop, he got a little country, he got a little pop, he got a little some of everything. Um, the songs that I guess I, he had a remix called Cold Heat. That seems to be the song that actually is getting the most play, kind of a dance song. Um, I like that song. That it was it was cool. Um, it was a nice song called Chosen Family. I liked that song. Um, Learn to Fly. I liked that. I wanted to love the Stevie Wonder song. It's called Finish Line. I wanted to love it. I gotta listen again. I didn't love it when I first heard it. Um, but there was a song, it was called Always in Love or Always, Always, I Will Always Love You. That's what it's called. I Will Always Love You. And that's the song where there's a rapper in there. I don't know if it's Young Thug. Nicole, I don't know if you remember, is that the song that has Young Thug? He starts rapping and there is, in my opinion, unnecessary profanity in that song because I'm like, why are you cursing on a song where it's saying I will always love you? It don't fit. It didn't make sense. So that made me not like that song as much as I would have liked it without that verse. What did you think about what you listened to so far, Nicole? So first I would like to say this, is which is what I told you um, before. When Tammy first said, oh, you know, take a listen to Elton John's. He has a new CD. I was thinking... I don't want to hear no Elton John. I don't like it already. That's what I was thinking, right? I was thinking, hmm. And so I was like, let me just go on and take a listen. And I want to say I'm pleasantly surprised. The only reason why I say pleasantly surprised, not even because the music is just so phenomenal, because I'm going to be quite honest. If it was anybody else, and maybe this is this, black white man and I'm doing it right now you know how people hear Adele mm -hmm. and they praise her oh she's so soulful or Christina Aguilera or you know these other white artists even though she's Ecuadorian but non-black artists I'll say for doing black the way black people sing give them praise and elevate them and we're sitting here like we do that all the time wait a minute what about this artist? And I'm doing it right now with Elton John because I'm going to be honest. If this was, okay, like take the song. Now, the first song he did with Dua Lupa, she's not a black artist. But I still was kind of like, but I like her. So when the music came on, immediately I felt like, Elton, that's you. <laughs> but... <laughs> Then the next song was with, I just see what it is. It's Young Thug and Nicki Minaj. I'm like, come on. So I listened to it. I didn't, I, and now this is how I review CDs. You know, I have Apple Music, so you can listen to the full album, you know, because I pay for it monthly, so you can get the whole album. I don't, I don't listen to the whole songs. I'll listen. If the first note don't grab me, I'll fast forward a little bit and listen and go through each song. I'll say this, just because it's Elton John and I was expecting Elton John, mm -hmm. I, 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 I was blown away because this, this ain't Elton John. I'll just say that. And once I get over that, I might be offended. Mm -hmm. I, I might feel like, oh, okay. This not really you. You just doing this to try to be relevant or try to get back in or whatever. Because I feel, and I know I'll be going, I'll be ranting sometimes, so stop me. But I get like that sometimes. I feel the same way about Robin Thicke, okay? I feel like 
his song, his first song came out. It it was more poppy. He had his he had long hair. He was on a bike. I really liked the song. It sounded kind of old school, Michael Jacksony, but poppy. But it was him. When I guess that didn't elevate him enough. Now he switched to the Lost Without You with the um, Neptune, you know, Pharrell and stuff. And I kind of felt like you're using us to mm -hmm. get a certain way because you're non-black. So now you want to do our music to have that wow factor. And, and, and part of me, I think after I get over listening to it, like, hmm, I wasn't expecting that out of you. That's probably what he's doing. The same thing Miley Cyrus did. She came out with her Wrecking Ball stuff. Then she came out with an album where she was rapping and this and that, used us. And then her very next album, she comes out and says, well, you know, this is really me. I'm done with this and I'm not hip hop. You know, oh, but your last <laughs> album, you was, you know. So mm -hmm. you know, I might be offended after I'm over. <laughs> well, see, on the other hand, I actually like Elton John as Elton John. You know, I love all those old songs. I I loved him as a songwriter. I loved his piano playing. I just loved his style. Him and Billy Joel. Like I just like I like what they do. So I was a little taken back by I get artists trying to stay, you know, relevant and wanting to do whatever, but I, I don't know. I, I like a certain genuineness of being who you are. And it's not that an artist can't be diverse and have other facets, because you can, but Sometimes when you go too far outside of who you are, then to me, it just kind of lacks a little bit of authenticity. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I got to take another listen. Some songs were cool, but nothing made me say, oh, I love this and I want it. I want it. What about you, Tawana? Uh, I'm going to be quite honest. I've only listened to maybe four songs and not even in its entirety. <laughs> um, but what I could say is, um, I I think it's a pandemic um, album, um, mm -hmm. and it just seems like he wants. To, there's a song on there for everyone. You might like one song or two songs, but there's a song that, um, regardless of what genre of music you like, there is something on this CD that's going to that might that's going to catch you in some type of way. Um, so I am going to go and listen through. Um, maybe not, like I said, maybe not every song in this entirety, but I will go through and listen to the entire CD, but it seems like he, it, there was something, some songs on there that I, you know, I, I think it's nice driving music or something you can sleep to. Um, I think it was a little jazz. I can't remember the name of it all. It wasn't the, um, I will always love you. I just. Um, I didn't even make it to Nicki Minaj's verse or, you know, whatever, but it was the song, I think it's the song that comes right before it. And it had a nice little mellow jazz something to it that I would listen to. But then once he started singing, <laughs> kind of his voice kind of threw me off. And I think the thing that will grab people the most is just his name being um, associated with the album. Uh -huh. Him being it, it Elton John, you know, so it has to be something that's great, regardless of what the CD sounds like. Um, there people will buy it just because it's it's Elton John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such this well, great position. Yeah, the CD is called the Lockdown Sessions. Um, if you guys are Elton John fans or if you're just interested, you can check it out and you know share with us or share on my page what you what you think about the cd whether you like it or whether you dislike it um nicole what did you say before we before we we joined because you kind of touched on something that tawana said um it, it was it was a oh, album. Album. that that's for sure and it did touch across multiple genres and something that i said when we were talking earlier was that when i listen to an album i like for that album to have a story, a flow, a vibe from beginning to end. And this is not that. that, that. Yeah, not at all. What I was saying was when I listened, I understand what you're saying. Individually, each song was kind of, it kind of like what Tawana was saying, there's something for everybody. It was kind of like individually, each song was kind of like, okay, okay. Not really connecting them as an album, just songs. You know what I mean? Just Almost a like a compilation. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm feeling today. But I also wanted to say, I understand how you feel about with the Elton John thing. I was never an Elton John fan. He had a couple songs that are classics that I like, but I was never this big Elton John fan. So me hearing this is kind of like, okay. But somebody who likes him would kind of be like, mm. you know what I mean? What is this? Because I kind of felt like that. Now, you know, nobody say nothing bad about Whitney. You know, that's when I go off, you know, but I didn't, I wasn't, I bought it, of course, because I love her, but her CD, was it My Love Is Your Love CD? Is that the one that had It's Not Right, It's Okay on it? I think so. It's Not Right, It's Okay, Heartbreak Hotel. I wasn't really yeah. feeling it because I kind of felt like she's trying, at that time, she's trying to do music of that time. And she had one song on there called uh, Until You Come Back which was like classic Whitney. That was my saving all my love for you type of song, uh -huh. you know? But the other stuff to me felt too, I like this Not Right It's Okay, um, but like Heartbreak Hotel, it was cute, but it felt like that's not Whitney to me. Uh -huh. So I can I can understand feeling like, no, I like you. And what right. you bring, just be you, you know, continue to give us you, you know? Right. And people gonna love it. Elton John could have come out his his same old self, and his album was gonna still do great because people gonna buy it. Like Tawana said, just because it's Elton John. Yeah. So what do y'all think? Since we kind of brought that up, what do y'all think about artists who do change to try to stay relevant? Like I, I, me, I'm all for staying authentic to who you are, and the people who love you are gonna love you. That's what you do. Um, like again, you don't have to stay in one box, one vein, but I still think that you should have an identity. And I think a lot of artists today don't have an identity. They're just trying to sound like whoever like and whatever everybody is was. selling. I don't like it. <laughs> Take Brandy, right? Brandy Norwood. She came out, what was it, 94? I'm like going to be down, you know. But she was able to transform with the times and still be her. Mm -hmm. With each album, Full Moon, she wasn't still singing, I want to bubble gum, I want to be down. Mm -hmm. But she was still relevant. Even now with her last CD, she's still relevant, but she's still brandy, right? Mm -hmm. One of my biggest disappointments for me is Beyonce. Because I feel like, like when I saw an interview with her where she talked about how she wants to be recognized for her singing and not a sex symbol and, you know, blah, 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 and my singing. And then you come out with, um, what's the song? The Lemonade Album. Well, before that, with uh -huh. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a diva, whatever, with all of that rappy stuff. The rappy like, song. Classic like you're not even singing no more. You're rapping. You know what I'm saying? Beyonce could literally bring back R&B music. This woman puts out an album without even, um, what do you call it? Um, Promotion. Promoting it. The day it dropped, just put out some old new album out today. <laughs> and it goes back. You know what I mean? Sells millions. You know, first mm -hmm. day, first day. So it's like she could literally do anything and people will love it, regardless if it's trash or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of mm -hmm. like, it's a disappointment for me when I see somebody with talent that opt to not use their talent because they think they need to do this. You know? Mm -hmm. Tawana, what do you think? I agree. I was thinking about Beyonce when, um, before she said it as well. It's not even just that Meg, the, the song she did with Meg the Stallion. It was the entire her and her 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 new music in general. It's everything just it's like a doll just gnawing on the bone, and it's I I just can't listen to it. It's I, I understand trying to stay relevant, but that she she's a it, it, it's too much. I, I don't like it. And 
A lot of people say that she can't sing. She, to me, I don't care. The girl is bad to me, like flat foot. She don't even have to dance. She dances, she sings, she can hold her breath, but she could just stand there flat foot and just sing the song, and she's going to sound amazing, in my opinion. But um, I, it's her her later music, I, I'm just not into it. I'm, I'm not into it. The remake she did, that was cool. Um, the Bob, 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 Bob. Oh, the Maze remake? Yeah, the maze we um, we make I, that oh, that song is not a favorite of mine. That would be one of my worst. I didn't. I I don't really. I wouldn't just sit and listen to that song, um, look for it and listen to it. But if it came on, I let it play. That was a cool song. But it's like she, um, it's like she's trying to take over for Jay Z. Like let him stay over there in his rap lane, and you can stay over here in your singing lane. Do yo? She wanted to do Spanish. Do some Spanish stuff. Do some R and B. Do your pop. But I, I think um, trying to touch on the rap part of it is it's just not it's to, it's not working for me. Um, and like you said, her, some people will buy her stuff just because they are part of the Beehive and. Even if you're, I'm not a part of no B, nothing. But I would listen, I would bootleg her music. Yeah. I, I think Beyonce can sing. Now, standing flat foot and singing, I will say this I've never heard her sound bad. I think she sounds nice. I heard her sound bad one time to me when she did Amazing Grace. I felt like child. No. <laughs> you know, good and well, she should have been up there. But besides that, you know, she sings live in concert, live for two hours, you know, 80 yeah. days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to give props where props are due. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I just think now she feels like I don't have to produce anything worth producing. I could just put anything out. And people are going to like I it. Like, I hated that 7-Eleven. What are you talking about? What What are you talking about? Like, I... Now you're going to make me go listen to the song because I don't know what's that. Yeah, me too, because I don't know that song. <laughs> the one she well, was I'm in like, on the Y'all borderline going to have to be high after y'all. <laughs> Yeah. But um, yeah. one thing you can say about Beyonce is she can sing. You you can't say she can't sing. You can say you don't like her music, but you can't say she can't sing. Wow. Um, but I will say that, yes, she definitely has some songs that I'm not truly feeling. Um, but she has talent and you can't knock. You can't knock a hustle. You can't knock what she does and you can't knock what she's accomplished. So for that, I give her props, even if I'm not part of the behalf. Um, so, uh, I want to, we're, we're going to wind down. I want to thank you ladies for joining me for the first episode. We'll be here, um, next week too. Um, I would like for you guys to vote on our poll. Remember, choose from the three options that are there. Vote for the best remake out of the three on the best, on the best post and on the worst Whole, vote for the one that you think is the worst remake, the one that shouldn't have been done, shouldn't have been touched. So I'm Tammy Harris. I'm Nicole Renee. I'm Tawana Bafé Dubois. And this is Natural Vibe, and we will see you next Monday. Peace and blessings. Thank you for joining us.